So apparently I need glasses now, so I guess you guys have to get used to this. So, you want to try film photography? I'm sorry. Alright, but let's say for the purpose of this video, you have already tried a disposable camera and you have already asked your relatives if they have any old film cameras laying around. And if that is the case, then here are five different inexpensive film cameras that you could consider getting if you want to try out some film photography. And let's start off with number one and the one that I have experience with and it is this Kodak Ektar H35. It comes in at roughly 50 bucks so it's very cheap and this film camera was actually released back in 2022 so it's a new release film camera which is very unusual today and in my opinion it looks really cool it shoots normal 35 millimeter film it is a point and shoot camera that is fully automatic so you can't really change any settings which is a con it has a 22 millimeter lens and an aperture of f 9.5 and with a shutter speed of 1 over 100th of a second and the only thing that you actually can change on the camera itself is that you can turn on or turn off the flash. So you really don't have to think much when you are using this camera. All you have to do is just point and compose your image and then press the shutter button and then wind the film forward because it is not a automatic winding camera. You have to do it yourself. But what makes the H35 really interesting and special is that it is a half frame camera, which just means that the image is only covering half of the frame, which means you get twice as many images per roll of film because you can shoot two images on what would normally be one frame but you divide it into two parts which is nice because film photography can be really expensive but some cons to consider with this camera is that it, since it's a half frame camera you get uh, the image is only half the frame which means it's less quality in the image and when you get the images developed and scanned some of the images might be overexposed or underexposed and that is because when they are scanning the images, they are only going to, or they are going to scan two at once because they scan one 35 millimeter frame at once. So, and then they are going to uh, compensate for the exposure for one of those two shots. And, and that means that the other one might be a little bit overexposed or underexposed. I hope that makes sense. But other than that, a really nice, inexpensive, new film camera. But now for camera number two, and let's say you want all the features from the camera I just mentioned, but you don't want it to be a half frame camera. Well then, you have the Ilford Sprite 35 Mark II. And the original Sprite 35 camera was a film camera from like the 50s or 60s, I think. And this Mark II version is also a new re release of an older version of a camera. It is very similar to the previous camera, the Ektar. It has a 31 millimeter lens, an aperture of f9, and the shutter speed of 1 over 120th of a second. And for this camera it's also around 50 bucks. They are very similar, this one and the other one. The only thing, or the largest difference is that this is a half frame. The Sprite is not a half frame camera. So you get the full 35 millimeter for every single image. For the third camera on this list we are going to look at our first vintage film camera. And it is the Olympus Stylus MGU. Ooh. U, M G U, Mark II. <laughs> These names are so hard for me. For this camera, you might have to pay a little bit more, so around 150 bucks. And this is a real classic. It has a really nice minimal look and this like 90s look to it, I think. And this Olympus is a really small, easy to use camera, so it's really good for beginners as well. It has a pretty sharp lens that is uh, protected by this sliding door which I think is pretty nice because it sort of protects your camera a little bit. It has a built-in flash as well and the camera is actually weatherproof. Not waterproof, but weatherproof. But my personally favorite part about this camera is that you turn it on and off by sliding the front or the sliding door part on the front, which I just think is really cool. <laughs> I'm nerdy like that. The camera has three buttons, so it's quite simple. You have one shutter button, one button for flash modes and then also a self timer button. So it's still a very simple camera, but you get some more, guess, I guess, like variations. So I would say it's a very much a run and gun film, point and shoot film photography camera. But let's talk about some cons and 
As you might have realized, I don't have any experience with this camera myself, but from what I, I have heard, uh, the viewfinder is really small and the flash also turns on every single time you turn on the camera. So turn on the camera and the flash is going to be on. And if you want to photograph without camera, you have to turn the flash off before shooting. And then you turn the camera off and on again and the flash is going to be on once again. So what I've heard, it's quite annoying to always needing to turn off the flash when you want to shoot. And as with all vintage camera, they are not getting any younger. So there's always a risk in buying vintage cameras because they have a few years on them already. So it's always a gamble with old vintage cameras, especially the ones with old electronics, in my opinion. So just keep that in mind as well. All right, and for camera number four, we are going to move up in size a little bit and we're going to take a look at the Pentax K1000. This is a really well-built camera that seems to survive pretty much anything. Now you start to get a little bit more uh, different settings you can change, uh, but you still get a vintage camera that looks really, really cool in my opinion. If you get the, the Pentax Takumar lenses as well, they are actually really sharp and really good lenses with nice color rende rendering, renditions, whatever. So this is a really good starter if you want to have something that is a little bit more than just a point and shoot camera. I think this is a really good option and it comes in at between 75 to maybe 125 US dollars depending on like the state or the shape of the camera. So a really good option if you're interested in that. But I forgot to tell you, one con about this camera is that it uses the LR44 batteries. So yeah, a con in my opinion. And then on a similar camera that I also would like to recommend that I think looks really good, it is the Canon F1. It is a classic when it comes to vintage cameras. It's super, or super, it is quite inexpensive. It comes in at around 125 to 200 dollars. It is a camera that was in the 70s and 80s was like a professional camera model from Canon. So it's a really good camera and uh, once again lenses really good and also a very reliable camera that is well built. So you can't really go wrong with this Canon either. There are two cons I guess with this camera as well and the first one being the battery once again and the second one being that it is pretty heavy camera or on the heavier side at least. I think it's a little bit under one kilo, maybe 800, 900 grams or something like that. So a little bit more heavy, but in my opinion, also one of the reasons why it feels so sturdy, well built and feels like it can take a beating. <laughs> you sh probably shouldn't because it's still a 40, 50 year old camera. You do get a lot for your money at 125 to 200 dollars. It's really worth it in my opinion. All right, and those were five different inexpensive film cameras that I definitely think is worth checking out. Uh, but before ending this video, I also want to give some honorable mentions of other cameras that I think are quite fun. And yeah, because back in the days, camera manufacturers were, they were crazy because they really tested some crazy things out, which I think is super fun. And we don't really see that today that much anymore. So here are some more fun examples that you could consider if you're interested. And first one being the Ryko AF77 panoramic 35 mm point and shoot film camera. It's around 120 bucks. It's a panoramic film camera, quite fun. Then you have something like the Size Super Iconta, which is, I guess, a relatively inexpensive medium format film camera that looks really cool. Uh, but it is a little bit more expensive than the other cameras we have talked about. It's around 200 to 400 dollars. And yeah, it's also a little bit more sensitive to damage because you can get some light leaks and stuff like that. Another quite funny looking camera is the Raleigh 35S. Uh, also a little bit more expensive, maybe 300 bucks. Uh, a 35 millimeter hard frame camera, I think. It looks just funny. And then to finish off, you also have the Kodak Brownie. Uh, 620 which is sort of like one of the first mainstream cameras uh, that was produced. It's not really that good or anything but it's a quite fun camera as well. But with that I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe and do all of that stuff and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!